Hi, I'm Peter Milden, Chief Operating Officer and co-founder of Viva City. Uh, we're a company that provides real-time data on how road spaces are being used, whether that's pedestrians, cyclists, e-scooters, or cars, vans, and trucks, um, and look at how they interact and uh, measure road safety. Viva City sensors capture and monitor vehicle use in cities and towns. In this interview, Peter Milden explains how and why this product can help streamline traffic and make travel in our cities easier, safer and cleaner. We only produce anonymous data, we don't do any surveillance or enforcement. Our sensor is camera based, but the video footage all gets uh, processed on the actual sensor device. So we've got a camera and a processor, there's some machine learning software that then recognises and classifies your pedestrian, cyclists, cars, e-scooters, etc. Tracks them through the field of view and it's actually only that path data that leaves the device. The video gets deleted within about 0.2 seconds. Once we send that data back through to our cloud servers, we can then use that to get a really detailed understanding of how that road is being used, but as I say, from an entirely anonymous standpoint. So it was uh, myself and uh, two friends from uh, university. All three of us were avid cyclists. Um, and uh, we all had a bit of a frustration cycling around and seeing traffic lights that weren't clearly optimised for cyclists and thought, oh, we could do better than that. Looked for a sensor that would help us write an algorithm to improve the traffic light and realised that there wasn't one. Um, so the first thing we did was say, well, can we build a sensor that can actually accurately detect cyclists and enable infrastructure to be built and planned for cyclists? And yeah, found fairly quickly that there was a market just for that sensor in its own right. Um, so yeah, by 2018, we'd uh, launched our product in the United Kingdom during COVID in 2020, when there were lots of active travel schemes being uh, put up to try and encourage people to walk and cycle during lockdowns. Um, yeah, the company really took off. Uh, we're now working with over 100 authorities uh, over in the United Kingdom, have about 3,500 devices uh, monitoring uh, road usage there and have launched over here in Australia um, about 18 months ago, have uh, four clients out here so far and uh, looking to expand uh, hopefully quickly and uh, yeah, really help the uh, active travel drive that is happening in this country and something that yeah, I'm very supportive of. What's the uptake and have you got some uh, examples of road use behaviour changing because of the system or the, the things that you've applied? We've got 10 sensors installed with City of Port Phillip down in Melbourne and some of those sensors have now been in for over 12 months as well. Um, it's really interesting looking at the seasonal variation, particularly on cyclist volumes. Uh, clearly, weather is a big driver behind whether people cycle or not. Um, really shows the power of collecting 365 day a year data rather than just doing a, a, a single Super Tuesday count to make investment decisions. One of the things that we're able to do is look at whether cyclists are in the newly provided cycle lane or whether they're riding on the sidewalk or whether they're riding in the lane of traffic and it's a pretty good indicator as to how well that uh, cycle lane has been plumbed into the rest of the network. If cyclists are choosing to be on the sidewalk, they don't feel safe. If cyclists are choosing to be in the main road, clearly they are, aren't getting enough priority on the cycle lane, and that can actually provide feedback to the authority who's put that lane in to say, look, you need to put a drop curve in, or you need to work out how this is gonna go through the junction, otherwise this asset that you have spent money deploying isn't being used and isn't going to get the value that you thought it was going to. In uh, Port Phillip so far, um, we've uh, yeah, so monitored a number of uh, schemes there and shown actually really good utilisation of a number of their uh, cycle lanes. Um, they've got a few interventions that are going on at the moment. We've got the before data, we're still waiting for the after data. These things do uh, take a little bit of time. Um, but I've also been looking at monitoring events as well. Um, so these sensors are in all the time. There's one near Albert Park and we can see when uh, uh, yeah, people are leaving concerts and the impact that that's happening on uh, the flow of traffic. Obviously the traffic created by the Formula One every year um, and then uh, the sensor was monitoring the site of the uh, half marathon and we were able to count the runners going out and then see them come back round uh, about an hour later and a bit more spread out. So some uh, extra little insights there in terms of what you can do with a permanent counter rather than a one day count as well.
We're now at a point where we've got three and a half thousand sensors deployed and counting every road user that goes past in front of those sensors. So the majority of those are over in the uh, United Kingdom. We've got a number in Northern Europe, over in uh, the US as well as uh, here in Australia. All of that data, so anonymous data, goes into a cloud database that lets us uh, serve it back to the authorities nice and quickly. Um, but, so we can, we can see how many things we have counted since uh, we uh, launched the current uh, database back in 2018. Um, and we've got a counter on our website that shows the total number of road users that we have uh, been counting. So since 2018, uh, when I flew out here to Australia three weeks ago, that had just ticked over 16 billion. So that would be 16 billion pedestrians, cars, vans, trucks, cyclists, taxis, vans, trucks that we have seen. That now, three and a half weeks later, is in the next 24 hours or so, I think, going to tick over to 17 billion. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a huge amount of data. There's a huge amount of value in that data then in terms of understanding how three and a half thousand roads are performing. Um, I think one of the key things that we'd like to try and do is look at when changes are made to those roads all around the world, learning what works well and what doesn't work well and give that insight to our uh, clients as well so we can give advice as well as just data in terms of uh, how they can make the road space better. A lot of people are going to hear buzzwords like data and then they're going to think data mining and then they get all these concerns. It's a strange world out there. Yeah. You have to debunk a couple of these uh, misconceptions of your technology, don't you? Yeah, um, so I, I mentioned earlier that the company took off during some of the uh, uh, COVID-19 lockdowns um, that were happening all over the world. Um, one of the things that we did during the lockdowns to really support um, local authorities in understanding the impact of a lockdown on their roads was to use the uh, machine learning to measure social distancing. And that was a particularly political hot potato is probably the best way to describe it. Uh, people don't like their civil liberties being taken away. The feeling that there was something monitoring this new law or guidance around social distancing caused a bit of a political stir. And however many times you explain, we don't know who you are, we ha we're not recording your face, we don't know what you look like, and we actually don't know whether you're complying with the law or not because you're allowed to be within a metre of uh, somebody who is in a household bubble. That still created, yes, yeah, a bit of a political stir around this uh, sort of system. Um, so I think, yeah, the really key message here is that we don't do any enforcement as a company. The data that we're producing is entirely anonymous. Um, yes, it's a camera-based device. Um, we record about 15 minutes of uh, video to validate that the data is good. Um, we don't try and recognise anybody within that anyway. And then once the system's set up and running, we're literally just getting, this sensor has seen five cyclists, six cars, 10 e-scooters, seven trucks in the last five minutes. This is how fast they were going. This is the path that they took. Um, so yeah, data that isn't going to be invasive to the individuals using that road space, um, but is going to be beneficial in terms of how that road space can then be uh, designed and improved to suit those people using the road. We have a ridiculous law, I will call it here. It's called a meter matter. So the meter doesn't really matter because the, the law is never ever policed. I find it offensive because they, it's just lip service to suggest that they're making conditions safer for cyclists. Is there a way that your system can uh, quantify the distance of a car to a bike rider and therefore be used in a court of law or not? So, um I'll come on to the course of law part towards the end, but we're just next month launching a new feature that's looking at uh, quantifying a number of near misses. Um, and we gather near misses in three different ways. So one is looking at proximity between two road users. So how far away is the car from the cyclist, the example you just gave. We also look at something called post encroachment time. So how far in front in terms of time did a car cut across a cyclist and then time to collision. Imagine you're cycling along and there's a parked car and there's another car out to the side, you have to slam the brakes on to avoid it. Had you not slammed the brakes on, how far away were you from hitting that particular scenario? So there are three ways of measuring a near miss, and that data is really powerful to understand which roads are more hazardous and which roads are less hazardous, to know where to put money in to make an intervention. And then when that intervention is put in, let's say you have one accident a year happening at a site, the last thing you want to do is spend a load of money on it, think you fixed the problem, you wait 12 months, you pat yourself on the back and say there have been no accidents and then the following day someone gets knocked off. So by being able to monitor those near misses on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, 
you can actually understand very quickly, have we made this road safer? So that's the use case that we're doing this proximity thing for. Um, in terms of that question around uh, what would, would we be able to look back and see what happened in a course of law? Um, so we're monitoring the, the, the path that different road users take, um, but we don't know who they are. So um, uh -huh. you could theoretically go back through and trawl through the path database to try and work out which vehicle it was. But any site where you've got multiple vehicles going past in a five minute period, you're going to have a hard time trying to do that. It's not what the system is designed for. Um, so as I say, we're really focused in on using the data to make the road safer rather than to enforce something. But married up with, say, cyclic uh, vision, you could potentially time code it? You could potentially try and extract that path. And I say, the, the, the moment that you know who was involved, and let's say the cyclist had a helmet cam on, that's going to be the data set that you want to use mm -hmm. to uh, understand what actually happened in that scenario. Uh, yeah, I said the, the, the data we're producing might be useful in understanding, well, how many times a day does a near pass happen at this junction? Was, was that driver doing something that's very typical or were they behaving very badly compared to other users? That's probably where the data could be of, of, of more use in that sort of scenario. I hope the governments understand what, what it is that you're presenting because it seems to me to be groundbreaking. You gave a little snapshot or an explanation of basically um, improving traffic flow, which is going to um, knock down emissions and so it's on the traffic signal side of things. Yeah, exactly. yeah so um, uh, as I said, right when I started in my explanation as to why we started the company in the first place, there was always this idea, as three founders saying, if we had a good cyclist sensor, could we use that to improve the traffic signal timing and pr produce a better algorithm on that? Um, back in 2018, we uh, started researching ways that uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence could be used actually in the decision of which uh, uh, stage at a traffic junction should get the green light and which one has the red light at any moment in time based on data from sensors. The idea there being that uh, you give the algorithm a target of, I don't know, minimise wait time for cyclists, minimise wait time for cars, minimise wait time for pedestrians, all three, um, and it decide what, how to cycle through rather than just going through on a fixed time basis, looking at the actual real time demands, trying to help create a green wave, those sorts of things. Um, so we've been working on this algorithm, say, since, uh, since 2018. Uh, we've tested it at a number of junctions in Manchester and have seen uh, a pretty significant reduction in uh, journey times through those junctions at that particular site. Doing trials at about uh, two or three other uh, cities at the moment, just making sure that we can get that algorithm to generalise, uh, make it cost effective to set up uh, from one site to the next. Um, and yeah, looking to market launch that one pretty soon in the UK and uh, talk to uh, the uh, relevant uh, transport authorities over here in Australia to work out how that system could interface with the uh, existing traffic controllers over here as well. We're not looking to rip out all the traffic lights, just provide advice effectively on a second by second basis on how to improve traffic flow. Core vision for us at the moment is make roads safer, safer for people to walk, encourage uh, cycling uptake and other active travel modes and if we can do that through data fantastic if we can do that through improving traffic signalized junctions fantastic um, yeah keeping that core focus on why we're here terrific thank you very much for taking the time to explain all of that no problem at all really fascinating thanks cool